Hello, my name is Sarah with the Ormond Beach Regional Library. And today on this episode of Volusia Gets Crafty, I'm going to show you how to use the beginner stitches we've been learning to create this butterfly. This is the fifth lesson in a series of crochet videos and our first real project together. So when we're starting the butterfly, the first color that you're going to use is gonna be this inside color. So I'm gonna do a reverse of what I did before. So just to show you how it'll look, so I'm gonna start with the blue and then I'll end with the brown, okay? So by the time we're done with the first round, we're working into a circle. This is what we're gonna end up with, all right? So it's a series of double crochets inside and there's chain twos in between them. So if this gives you an idea of kind of what we're gonna be going for, it might help. So we're gonna take our tail end of our yarn and we're gonna make our slip knot that we learned in our very first video. We're gonna put it on our hook and make it tight, not too tight. Remember, leave your little space. And we're gonna chain six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, instead of working back into the tops of the stitches like we did, we're gonna make a circle. And we're gonna do that by using something called a slip stitch, not a slip knot, a slip stitch. It's not really anything spectacular that we were gonna dedicate a video to, but it's something that we're gonna use repeatedly throughout crochet. So you're gonna insert your hook into the very first chain you made, the top loop of it, okay? And you're gonna put your yarn over your hook. You're gonna pull it through that chain loop. And then you're also gonna pull it through the loop on your hook. That's a slip stitch, okay? And you can kind of pull tight, but what you'll have created is a circle. You see that? We're gonna work into that circle. Now you'll just keep your tail end of your yarn kind of close to that circle. And we're gonna chain three. One, two, three. Remember in the rules of crochet that a chain three counts as a double crochet, okay? So that's one double crochet. We're gonna put a second double crochet into the hook right next to it. So we're gonna yarn over. We're gonna insert a hook into the center of the circle. We're gonna put our yarn over our hook. We're gonna pull up a loop, okay? You're gonna yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. There's your second double crochet. Now, when I first started crocheting, the hardest part was the beginning. So if you're struggling to hold on to your yarn and knowing where to put your fingers, that's okay. I've been doing this many years and I still struggle with it. Once you get past this first round, you'll have something to hold on to. It'll get much easier. So next we're gonna chain two, one, two, and we're gonna put two more double crochets into the center of your circle. Once again, just keep your tail following it around. We're gonna bury it underneath. I know it doesn't sound very nice, but we're gonna do it anyway. Yarn over, insert into the center of the circle, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Again, yarn over, insert into the center of the circle, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. There's our two double crochets. We're gonna chain two again. Now crochet is all about repeat patterns and that's our repeat pattern here. Two double crochets, chain two, two double crochets, chain two. Okay, yarn over, insert into the middle of the circle, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And again, all right, one more time, we're gonna chain two, one, two, keep that tail following the circle, Yarn over, insert, pull up a loop, pull through two, pull through two. Yarn over, insert, pull up a loop. Careful to pull up the loop and not your tail that's getting buried. Pull through two, pull through two. 
So now we've done, if you look at it, four, four sets of these two double crochets. One, two, three, four. We need to do this four more times, each time separating them with the chain two. Now you're thinking, right now it looks like there might be enough space, but you're gonna find out there's not enough space right here. But guess what? We're not going into the stitch, we're going into the center of the circle. So these double crochets, they can move. You can make them tighter so that you've got more circle to go into. And you're gonna need to do that to fit it in because you can see how tight these are. But you're just gonna chain two, do two double crochets into the center of the circle, and then another chain two. And you're gonna do that until you get back to the beginning and you'll have eight of these two double crochet clusters, we'll call them. Each of them separated by a chain two. And we'll meet you back when you hit that point. Okay, so we're picking up where we left off now where we should have eight of these double crochet clusters. So we have one, we've got two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Each of them have those chain two spaces between the sets, okay? So we're back at the beginning. We need another chain two to go in between these two sets though. So don't forget that. One, two. We're gonna do a slip stitch, which we started this video with, into the top of this chain three that we started with. Remember the one that counted as the double crochet? So there was one, two, three chains. So we're gonna insert into that top chain. If you get just one loop, that's fine. I try to get two, it just makes it more sturdy, but whatever you can manage. Yarn over, pull through that chain, and also pull through the loop on your hook, and you've closed it up, okay? So then what we're gonna do is end this color. So we're gonna basically chain one, okay? Then you're gonna take your scissors, and you're gonna cut a long tail about that length. You're gonna remove your hook by pulling up, pull that loop, that strand through, and you're gonna pull it tight. Okay, so that's your first round. Next, we're gonna pick our second color and go for the second round. And it's just, just consists of two rounds. So for this round of the butterfly, we're gonna add in clusters of six double crochets. This is what you're gonna end up with. And you can see it does not lay flat. It's not supposed to. We're gonna be creating a three-dimensional butterfly, but it's a lot of stitches. You're gonna get a lot of practice with your double crochets here. But yes, this is ultimately what we're gonna end with. So that's kind of gives you a goal. So here's my second color. I'm gonna create a slip knot like I did in the first video put it on my hook. All right, so find where we tied off. There's our chain three, and there's our first double crochet, okay? If you pull apart the posts, you can see there's a space between them. That's where we're gonna insert our hook. So insert the hook, and you're gonna take the working end of your yarn. I know we got a lot going on with these tails. Don't worry, we're gonna get rid of them here in a minute. You're gonna pull that strand through, and you're gonna pull it through one more time. So it's a slip stitch. We're attaching it with a slip stitch. So take your two tails of your two colors and just kind of wind them, wind them behind and along the edge of there, okay? We're gonna chain one to secure. And working into your chain two spaces, see right there, the big gap space, that's where we're gonna put our six double crochets, okay? So we're gonna yarn over, go into the chain two space, this big space here, and pull up your loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. There's one, got five more to do. Pull up a loop, pull through two, pull through two. When you make series of double crochets like this in one singular stitch, it often creates what looks like a shell. And you can kind of see that in the example behind us. Um, 
which is real pretty. Some Afghans just use shell patterns. Okay, so let's see how many we have. And you can count the posts or you can count your V stitches, remember. I like to count the posts. So we have one, two, three, four, five. We need one more. Six, okay. Now, in order to get that shell kind of pattern, we're just gonna move our tails out of the way now. We're not gonna bury them. We're, they're already under six stitches, so they're okay. In order to make that shell pattern, you kind of want to cinch this down. So here's our next set of two double crochets from the row below. Remember, we can pull those apart and there's a space between them. That's where we're going to insert our hook. We're going to pull up that loop of your working yarn and we're going to pull it through the loop on your hook to create a slip stitch and pull tight. And look at it, okay, made like a shell, okay? So this is what we're gonna do all the way around because crochet is about patterns and repeats. We're gonna put six double crochets into your chain two space and we're gonna cinch it down with a slip stitch into the space between your two double crochet cluster. So let's do that again. Do our first double crochet. And put six of them in there. And at the beginning, you're going to have plenty of space. You're going to think, oh, this is great. Um, but by the time you, you hit the other end, it's going to be so wobbly and full of stitches. You're going to think you're doing something wrong. And in normal circumstance, you, you know, when you're crocheting a blanket, you don't want it buckling and wobbling like that. But for this, we don't mind because it's a butterfly. Okay. So let's count the stitches for this one. There's one right there, one V, two, three, four, five, six. There's our six. So we're gonna to look to the row below. There's our two double crochets that were together. Do you see that? Pull them apart, put your hook in between, pull up that loop and pull it through the loop on your hook and cinch it tight, okay? So this is gonna go all the way around. Six double crochets and then your slip stitch. Six double crochets and then your slip stitch. And that's gonna go all the way around and we'll meet you at the end. So I've made my way all the way around. You can see my wobbly flower looking thing here. Should have, if you've done it right, eight of these petals, okay? Because we had eight, eight chain two spaces. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So if you had eight, you did it good, all right? So I've just completed my six double crochets into my last chain two space, and we're back at the beginning. And we're gonna look for that base of the first stitch that you made, that chain, that chain stitch. If you can get under one loop, if you can get under two, whatever you can do, just you want to connect it and cinch it down. So insert your hook, yarn over, we're going to do a slip stitch. So pull through that one and then pull through the loop on your hook. Okay, so it's together. Now is when the magic happens. So we're going to take our scissors we're going to trim off those tail pieces to get those out of the way. We're also going to trim off that tail from the very first round, okay, because we don't want those to bother us. And this is where we're going to make it into a butterfly, okay? So we're going to chain eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, okay? And what we're gonna do is take the bottom of your flower and we're gonna fold it back, okay? So we're gonna fold it under and pinch it so that it's like a mirror image of the other half, okay? And then we're gonna take our butterfly and we're gonna flip it that same way once. And you're gonna need to pull your chain just a little bit because we're gonna flip it one more time. That's creating the body of our butterfly and hold, it's gonna hold it shut. Now in the process, do you see what happened? The loop on my hook has gotten extremely big. We don't want that, so cinch it tight again. We're gonna kind of move it out of the way because this is kind of the fiddly part because we wanna secure it. So do you see where the body started before that chain that we just made? We're gonna slip our hook underneath that, okay? And we're gonna pull through 
and pull through, do like a slip, a slip stitch. Okay. And you can reposition that body around because it's just a loose chain that's wrapped around it. All right. Then we're going to chain one. I'm going to get our scissors, cut the yarn, pull the strand through, cinch it tight. We're almost there, you guys. Almost there. Okay. So we got this lovely tail hanging here. Remember what I told you about in our first video here? We've got these darning needles. We're going to sew in that end. So this is what you do. You'll take the needle and thread your yarn through it. And typically you want to go to the back side of the project or the inside of it. So take one of these inside parts and you're going to run your, the needle under some of the stitches. Okay. And pull it through. It's going to hide that tail. Usually you go through one way and then come back a different way, go through a couple more stitches, just like that. Okay. And then you can trim that. Careful not to cut your project. Okay. And there's your butterfly. Now he just needs a couple antenna, right? So let's take that strand of yarn that was from my tail. Kind of measure out how big you want those antenna to be. Okay. Cut a strand that's about the right size. And then what I did was I just tied little knots on the end so that it wouldn't fray. You just pull a knot to the tip of it on each side. Just like this. Okay. You can trim off those little fuzzies at the end or you can leave them. It gives it character. You're going to feed it underneath the, the chain. And then grab both ends and pull it to the top. And there you have your butterfly. Now this one is the opposite to the one that I've made before. Now when you're thinking of what you're going to do with the butterfly, I have another one that I attached a safety pin. I just sewed it on to the back of the butterfly so that I could attach it to a bag or a scarf if I wanted to. Um, you could also attach it to another crochet project you had if you wanted to put it on the center of a granny square, you could as an embellishment, a 3D embellishment. So those are just a few options you've got. Because they are three-dimensional, you can stand them up like that too on a dresser. Just something cute, okay? So I want to congratulate you if you were able to see it through with me here to this, this last project to the very end. Um, thank you for joining me for this fifth lesson in my crochet series. If you have any questions, please comment below. And we'll see you again next time.